Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, 19 July 2021. And today, I want to give you a background briefing of one of the most important decisions to come out from the Immigration and Protection Tribunal came out a couple of days ago. And this is to do with COVID-19. A gentleman from India appealed his deportation. Um, the tribunal, as is expected, refused to consider any of the merits of the decline decision for this individual. However, the humanitarian circumstances, which is what about which is what appeal and deportations are all about, referred to the COVID-19 situation going on in India at the moment and extensive submissions were made on the terrible situation in India and as part of the humanitarian circumstance. Now, um, I'll just bring up the relevant decisions. As you all know, those of you who've been in, involved in um, deportation appeals, there are three things the tribunal has to look at. Is it against the public interest um, if you're allowed to stay in New Zealand? And with this gentleman, the tribunal said, no, it is not against the public interest if he's allowed to stay in New Zealand. The tribunal looked at, would it be unjust or unduly harsh for the appellant to be deported? The tribunal says, and I quote at paragraph 45, the tribunal finds in the circumstances, particularly with regard to the current situation in India and the circumstances of the appellant's family, it would be unjust or unduly harsh for the appellant to be deported from New Zealand at this time. Now, those two findings, yes, those are good, but the critical um, decision is the actually first of the three decisions the tribunal has to make is the humanitarian nature. And the argument is all about COVID-19 and the tribunal goes at length to consider the COVID-19 pandemic situation in India. In a paragraph 40 on determining humanitarian nature, the, and I quote from the tribunal's decision, deportation to India at the present time would effectively involve deporting the appellant to a location in the grip of health, financial and social crises of a magnitude that is exceptional and which will have a direct impact on the welfare of the appellant and his family. It is expected that these conditions will not endure in the long or even in the medium term, particularly as the vaccination program in India progresses. However, at present, the tribunal finds that the situation in India that currently exists in such, is such that the appellant's deportation there at this time would give rise to exceptional circumstances of a humanitarian nature for him and his family. The tribunal determined, and actually I'll get my iPad back, for the reasons given, the tribunal finds that the appellant has exceptional circumstances of a humanitarian nature, which would make it unjust or unduly harsh for him to be deported from New Zealand at this time. The tribunal also finds that it would not in all circumstances be contrary to the public interest for him to remain in New Zealand. And at 53, the appeal is allowed and the deportation liability of the appellant is cancelled. That's a huge, huge decision to come out from the tribunal. Now, some of you are aware that last year I filed on behalf of some clients from Brazil, India, USA. Um, they claimed asylum um, as refugees based on asylum, COVID-19. We also have um, decisions against deportation with the tribunal at the moment. Um, it also, based on COVID-19 and this decision that I just briefed you on um, makes it look good for those 
appellants, those clients as well. But going back to the, the refugee, when I first, you know, thought about it and was asked about it, you know, a number of people says, no way, you just can't do that. That's not how a refugee works. I disagree. Now, that's just my opinion, okay? The final determination will come from the tribunal in due course, um, probably. But humanitarian circumstances, you know, people are saying, I mean, for refugee circumstances, well, there's never been any decision in the past um, for refugees on that basis. Well, this is true. This is the first worldwide pandemic since 1918. In 1918, the refugee conventions, United Nations refugee conventions didn't exist. Now, what's happened is I think my first client, we filed their claim in either September, October last year. The standard process is that you do your submissions, which we did, and then immigration come back and comment on them. And then they arrange an in-depth, usually at least the whole day, interview with the asylum claimant. None of my clients have yet to be interviewed. And I was thinking, well, that's strange. They usually get interviewed within the first two or three months. Now we're talking about, gee, you know, won't be long before, so it's just nine months now for the first of them. Why hasn't that happened? And my belief is because Immigration New Zealand feel they might have to grant residence, I mean, refugee status if they do their determination based on the UN conventions. But then again, what they're really scared of, if they say no, then the appellant has an automatic right to the appeal to the tribunal. And I believe Immigration New Zealand um, and the government are scared to death that if they say no, it goes to the tribunal, the tribunal might come down on the side of the appellants. And of course, you can imagine what's gonna happen there. Every overstayer in New Zealand is likely to be filing for COVID, especially if you're from countries like India, Brazil, Fiji, um, half of Europe, most of um, Southwest and Southeast Asia and Africa. And yeah, so this decision that's came out a couple of days ago of the from the Migration Protection Tribunal for the deportation of this gentleman, I think is going to have huge, huge effects. And, but, you know, the New Zealand government doesn't want to open the doors. And then I understand that, okay? I understand that. But, you know, I'd say to um, Jacinda, I'd say to Minister Fa'afoy, this is a reality we live in. You know, COVID-19 is decimating so many countries around the world, none worse than India and Brazil, and now Fiji. And that's where a lot of our overstayers come from. And so I can see, yeah, if I was an overstayer, if you're an overstayer, my suggestion is you seriously consider this because the tribunal has confirmed it's an absolute disaster and New Zealand, Immigration New Zealand, they're not going to give Immigration New Zealand permission to allow them to port overstayers to those countries. Now, the tribunal says this is a temporary thing, but how long will it last? People saying, oh, it's finishing. No, it's not. In certain parts of the world, it's ramping up, getting worse. You know, um, and there's Delta variant. Um, no one's controlled it yet, and it'll take off probably in other places, and who knows another variant. So anyway, look, that's an update. I, I got this this morning at about 10 o'clock, and I was reading it and said, wow, this is huge very huge so if you're an overstayer if you've just been declined your visa and you and you're now within your 42 days um, to appeal your deportation and you're from a country that is affected badly um, by covid then yeah you've got a pathway forward and it won't please the government one little bit and I, I really congratulate the tribunal on taking this humanitarian aspect because, you know, I find it disgusting that Immigration New Zealand have been trying to deport people to some of these places. You know, I mean, you see the, the views of India, of, of um, Brazil, um, Fiji now, and it's outrageous. 
um, that the government has been trying to deport people to those countries. Anyway, look, that, everyone, that's an update for today. I hope it's useful. If I can be of assistance or my company, TDI Immigration, can be of assistance, by all means, um, send me an email. Again, as I always say, you take care. Um, don't be complacent, as we've seen in other countries in the world. When you go out there, scan in. Every shop you go, every business you go, every place you go, scan in. You know, yes, we're amazingly lucky. I mean, the one thing that Jacinda's done well um, is control COVID. And that's the most important thing she's had to do. Yeah, there's a few other bits and pieces, but luckily that could be done better. But none was more important than controlling COVID. And we're ranked, I think, 202nd in the world on a per capita basis for cases um, and deaths, you know, right down the bottom. We're lucky. But don't get complacent. You scan in everywhere you go because all you need is one spreader out there and the health department um, are relying on us to make sure we've scanned everywhere. So if someone turns up in the community positive, we can react very quickly and we can see what happens when you don't. You know, look at Sydney now, look at Melbourne now, you know, and that's because the population of the people, they got complacent. They stopped social distancing. They stopped scanning. They stopped wearing their masks. And now they're in the crap. And we're pretty good. So do your job. Scan. Okay. Take care now. See you later.